Okay, so good morning. Um, so to warm your brains up, I'd like you to try and read the paragraph on screen. Okay, so give me a wave if you've been able to read the paragraph. Excellent, brilliant, everybody's awake. So this is a paragraph unjumbled, and I like this paragraph because it shows just how automatic our reading ability has become. So when you start off learning how to read, you're having to sound out each letter and it's really effort, it takes a lot of effort, but as we've developed in our reading ability, it's become so automatic that even when the words are all jumbled up, that we are still able to make sense of things. So this is the psychological party tricks talk. And one of the first things I said in the description is that I can't read your minds. Um, so I just thought I'd do a little demonstration of this. So, can everybody pick a card? Don't tell the people next to you. I just want you to memorize the card. So pick one of the cards and memorize it, please. Okay, has everybody got a card? Yep. Okay, so this is me. I'm Dr. Emma McDonald. Um, on Twitter, I'm Ninja Cats. Um, I'm a psychologist, I'm mainly interested in teaching and learning, teaching statistics, memory and dyslexia, which is what my PhD was actually in. But as a lot of people with PhDs, most of my time is spent doing something completely different to the subject of my PhD. Um, I'm a senior lecturer at Cardiff Metropolitan University in psychology and education. And I spend most of my time teaching on a master's in psychology and education. So it's very much applying psychology to education in the classroom. But I spend most of my time listening to a rock and metal station called Primordial. So any rock and metal fans in the crowd, I recommend checking out that radio station. And I've got uh, two pictures of my lovely overlords, Audrey and Archie up there, who spend most of their time paying it a lot of attention, invading Zoom meetings and causing havoc. So that's just a little bit about me. So hopefully everyone can still remember the card they picked. Yep. Okay, so I should have made your card disappear now. So can you put your hands up if your card is missing? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Good start. Does anyone know exactly how I did this? Yeah? I see a hands going up. So what you'll notice is I've changed all the cards. So these are the original set of cards. And the thing is, key thing is I only asked you to focus on remembering one of them. Then I distracted you for a while to hopefully get you to forget all the other cards, only the one you remembered. And because they're all very similar, it's quite easy to do that. And so that's when there's a completely different set of cards appeared. Some of you are like, wow. <laughs> Some of you are like, oh, I know this one. So it's a quite a nice little party trick, especially when lots of people say, oh, you're a psychologist, can you read my mind? So I can try. So this is another nice little demonstration. It's a GIF, and if you focus on it, you can actually change the direction of the train. So it will go, you might see it coming towards you, and then if you focus, you can make it go in a different direction. So 
Hands up if you managed to change direction of the train. Excellent. It's really annoying. After the first time you've done it, it kind of constantly flips, which is quite irritating. So now I've got another one. And just a warning for anyone who's sensitive to flashing images. There are images flashing here. So it's an image, then it's a gray screen, and then it's an image again. So the aim of this is for you to spot the difference between the two images. So you'll see a first image, it'll flash up gray screen, and then it will show a second image. And I want you to try and spot the difference between the images. Now, when you see the difference, if you could put up your hand. So once you've spot the difference, if you could put up the hand so I can see you've spotted it. So here's the first one. So hand up when you spot the difference. OK, a lot of people are spotting it. Some people are looking very frustrated. For those of you who haven't spotted the difference, look at the red drink and count the number of straws. <laughs> OK, so here's another one. Again, hands up when you spot the difference. This one's harder. Okay, so again, look at the bottom of the screen, count the number of arches. <laughs> so that was a bigger change in the picture, but because it was down at the bottom of the screen, people find it a lot more difficult. So here we have another one. So again, hands up when you spot the difference. Some people are getting really good at this now. <laughs> so the disappearing Great Wall of China. And I think this is the most tricky one. Sometimes it still catches me out if I haven't looked at this picture for a while. So, again, it's on the edge of the picture. And this, these kind of little tricks are really good at demonstrating how our vision works. So, what you think you're seeing is you're thinking you're seeing a whole picture. So, you think you're looking at that whole slide or the whole image at the front. Actually, what your eye is doing is dartering it down and building up an image in your mind. And because this is a small change in the image, often, unless you're looking at that part of the screen at exactly the right time, you won't be able to see the difference. And as I said, the first one you found quite easy, many of you, because it was at the center of the image. And we tend to focus on the center of the image and uh, build up the picture around it. So the, ones that, the changes that are on the edge are often much more difficult to spot. So, I've been speaking for a while. I'm going to hand over to another psychologist, Richard Wiseman, now. Hi, I'm Richard. This is Sarah. And we're going to perform the amazing colour-changing card trick with this blue-backed deck of cards. Now, the idea is very simple. I'm just going to spread the cards in front of Sarah and ask her to push any card towards the camera. Right, OK, let's see. I'm going to go for this card here. OK. Now, Sarah could have selected any card at all from the deck, but she selected the card which is now face down on the table. What I'm going to ask her to do is show us which card she selected. Right, so the card that I chose was, in fact, the Three of Diamonds. The Three of Diamonds, okay, excellent choice. 
That card goes back into the deck. Now I'm just going to spread the cards face up on the table. Give a little click of the fingers, and you'll see that Sarah's card here has now got a blue back. Not particularly surprising. What's slightly more surprising is all of the other cards have got red backs. And that is the amazing colour-changing card trick. Hi, I'm Richard, this is Sarah, and we're going to perform the amazing colour-changing card trick with this blue-backed deck of cards. Now, the idea is very simple. I'm just going to spread the cards in front of Sarah and ask her to push any card towards the camera. Right, OK, let's see. I'm going to go for this card here. OK. Now, Sarah could have selected any card at all from the deck, but she selected the card which is now face down on the table. And what I'm going to ask her to do is show us which card she selected. Right, so the card that I chose was in fact the Three of Diamonds. The Three of Diamonds, okay, excellent choice. That card goes back into the deck. Now I'm just going to spread the cards face up on the table. Do a little click of the fingers, and you'll see that Sarah's card here has now got a blue back. Not particularly surprising. What's slightly more surprising is all of the other cards have got red backs. And that is the amazing colour-changing card trick. So if you haven't come across Richard Wiseman before, I highly recommend him. He's very good. He's a magician and a psychologist. Um, he's got loads of really cool videos. He's also got lots of really good books. Um, and they're designed for people that aren't necessarily have any intention of studying psychology, mainly for fun. Hands up if you spotted any of the changes the first time you watched that video. Okay. Interestingly, wave your hand if you've seen that video before, if you spotted it. Okay, so there's only a very small number of people that noticed any changes. And again, it's that same principle. We think we're seeing the whole screen. You think you were watching the whole video, but actually you were focused on the magic trick, and that's the aim. So focus your, you're focusing your attention on the magic trick and then you don't spot all the changes in the background. And there is a lot of bigger changes in that video there. And that's a principle a lot of magicians use. So a lot of mag magic is all based on getting the audience to focus their attention on a particular spot, on a particular action, and then you don't notice all the other things going on. So moving on from kind of tricks of your vision where there's changing images, one of the things that I don't know if you are aware about is the idea of this halo effect. So we tend to judge people more positively if they are more attractive. So the more attractive someone, we often give them kind of more positive characteristics. So on screen here, I have two famous and controversial, depending on which end of the spectrum you're on, um, leaders. But they were both generally classed as quite attractive, um, and they were seen quite positively. Now, some of you may be wondering why I've put them on upside down. If I turn the images correctly, So again, this teaches us a lot about facial processing. We focus a lot on the eyes and the mouth. And I say, they looked quite normal when they were upside down, because the mouth and the eyes are upside down, and that's what we focus on. So it's very easy for you to look at those images and go, yeah, that's fine. Um, it's only when you realize how messed up the image are. It's, very, very freaky. So this is another one which is quite interesting and this apparently, I haven't verified it, was not come up with by psychologists, it was come up with by schoolboys. But there are psychological principles in place here. 
So what you see on screen here are perfectly respectable celebrities in swimming costumes. Now, if I cover up this picture, it gets ruder. OK? <laughs> So this was nicknamed bubble porn, and we like to fill in gaps with our mind. And unless we were told they were wearing swing costumes, we like to fill it in with the rudest possible option. <laughs> so again, perfectly respectable, not so much. And remember, it's your mind doing that, that's not me. <laughs> So I've been talking for a while now, and I really want to get you guys to do a bit of talking um, all together, hopefully. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a screen of words. And instead of reading what the word says, I want you to say the color it is printed in. So we're going to have a practice one on here. So the big word. We're not going to say psychology, we're saying the colour it's printed in. So, everyone together? OK, brilliant. OK, everyone ready for the next screen? And if you make a mistake, say it again, and we'll see how long it takes everyone to get through the screen. So, off we go. So, blue. Okay, everyone finished about the same time, which is nice. Everyone found that quite easy? Okay, some of you, I, I can feel giggling because you know what's coming next. <laughs> so, we're going to do it again on my second screen. Same rule apply. So, it's red. hear everybody start off really well and you're like yes I've got this and normally by the second line everyone starts going a bit haywire so again this is another one of those kind of principles about how automatic our reading has become so when you were in well preschool you learned colors first you were able to point at something and go that's red that's yellow you were able to name colors before you were able to read but reading takes over it becomes automatic so you were all then having a little mental battle in your heads going no nope, don't read it say the color <laughs> and again it's just a really nice demonstration of how far we've come and again it's always when you start to learn something new it's always effort it takes a lot of effort and it's quite hard to pick up something new but this is a nice demonstration of just how far you've come in reading, even if you found it very difficult to start with. I'm severely dyslexic, and again, I can do this, and it still tricks me up. Okay, so this is a nice dilemma for you, and it's quite a big room. So imagine this was an exam hall now, and you get to the final page of your exam, and you see this message. Select whether you want two extra points or marks, same word, um, two extra points or six extra points added to your final exam grade. So you get to choose whether you have two or six extra points added to your final exam grade. But there's a small catch. If more than 10% of the people uh, taking the exam select six marks, then nobody in the whole room gets any extra marks. So you're not allowed this to discuss this with the people around you. You can have a look around the room, see how many people are here. Decide whether you would select either two or six. So don't discuss it. OK, 
Okay, hopefully everyone's made a decision. So I'm going to ask everyone who thinks they're going to take six marks, can you put up your hand? Okay. <laughs> Nobody's going to get anything. <laughs> One of the things that's interesting is, do you think you would have changed your mind if you were able to talk to the people around you? So do you think you would have behaved differently? If it's a smaller group, would you be there, made a different decision? If they were all people you knew well, would you make a different decision? And this is a really nice dilemma, and it's something that's been used a lot in economics um, for many years. but. One of the things that's interesting that's been applied to at the moment is about environmental science and climate change. Because one of the things that we have to do to help prevent climate change is always pick the two. So make the more difficult decision. So maybe spend more money on an electric car or make more effort to get public transport. So it's less easy for us, but it's better for everybody overall in a bigger picture. So this is quite a nice little example, and it's been applied to, I would say, the world's biggest problem at the moment. So I'm coming towards the end of the talk now, and it is the morning, but I am a memory researcher originally. So I'd like you to memorise this list of words. So I'm going to give you a little bit of time to memorise this list now. Please don't cheat and write it down or take a photo. Okay, so hopefully you've got to the end of that list. So I've got two nice little riddles for you now. And again, it shows kind of how we think quite often. So we've got the first one about the lily pads and the second one about the bat and ball. Again, have a chat with the people next to you. <coughs> See if you can work out the answer to the two. Can anyone tell me the answer? 47, excellent. So it doubles in size, so the day before it was half filling the pond. What about the bat and ball? Five, yeah. So again, often we kind of take mental shortcuts with our thinking. And again, it's one of those very famous books in psychology of fast, thinking fast and slow, and we're constantly taking mental shortcuts. And people really struggle with these problems because the way that we kind of process the information, we often kind of jump to one conclusion rather than another. But that was just a distraction. The big thing was the memory test. So <coughs> when I show you these words, I wish when you say yes, if you saw them on the original list, and know if they were not on the original list. So start off, dream. Yes. Cat. No. Yes. Your... Yes. No. Yes. Yes. Okay, brilliant. You were all wonderful participants because these are the answers. And I was able to implant a false memory um, because sleep was not in the original list. And I'm doing another talk today about memory. 
And this is one of the principles that we use in that talk, is that we often memorise lists based on their meaning. Now, if you go back to the original list, you'll notice every single one of those words are very semantically, so meaning-wise, linked to memory. So the way that we memorise things, we have a network, and every time you were reading one of those words, it was triggering the word sleep. And so you're going sleep, 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 sleep every time you read those words. Then I did a lovely little bit of distraction and getting you to chat to the people around you to get some more distraction in there. And so here, when you came to this list, you were like, now I'm sure sleep must have been on that list. And thank you for all the people that said yes, but well done. So there's people with excellent memory that said no. But again, it's a nice demonstration of how fallible our memory is. So even on a short memory test like that, I was able to implant a, fal a false memory. So we're all susceptible to them. <coughs> so I would say thank you guys so much for taking part. If you remember at the start, um, my name's Emma McDonald. My Twitter handle is Ninja Cats, and that's a lovely cat pretending to be a raven or a crow. <laughs> and obviously, I've been analysing you all since you got here, so I've created a personality profile for you. So have a read of this, see if I've got it slightly accurate. <laughs> so give me a little wave if I've maybe got about 50% accurate or higher. <laughs> Oh, there's a few people admitting to it. So, obviously, I have been analysing you. This is a paragraph full of Barnum statements that generally most people will think applies to themselves. So you can just see there's a load of caveats in there. So people go, oh, yes, that's a bit like me. And this is the sort of thing that's used a lot by fortune tellers and people that do star signs. So lots of Barnum statements. But I think it's a really nice demonstration that it's, we're all quite similar. There's a lot of things about insecurities in there. We all have different insecurities. We all have our own mental health issues. And it's something that we should recognise that brings us together as a group. But thank you guys very much for your attention today.